What is up, guys? Jake here with The Killing Joke Studios and Mixing with Metal. Today, I have a, uh, a almost a necessary tutorial for you uh, if you're dealing in the hardcore, hard rock, or metal genres. Even in a lot of pop genres, this is necessary. But uh, what I'm going to show you how to do today is create your own sub drops or bass drops, or whatever you want to call them, from scratch inside of Pro Tools, or really any DAW for that matter. If you've been recording or mixing for really any length of time, it's almost inevitable that you've been asked to put a sub drop somewhere. And how I used to deal with this is go online and find 808 sample or something like that and download it and do a lot of heavy processing on it. And it just became a whole process and I always was losing them. And, you know, I'd have 15 808 samples sitting somewhere on some hard drive of my computer and it just became a whole mess. So I found this workaround on how to create your own sub drops inside of Pro Tools or any DAW. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new audio track. We're gonna create a mono track. If you make your sub drop in stereo, it's gonna sound janky and weird. So just create a mono track. Uh, and we're gonna select a region here. I'm gonna select about three seconds. Uh, this is another beautiful thing about making your own sub drops as opposed to uh, finding an 808 sample or something like that is you can really customize it to the needs. So say, you know, maybe it's a breakdown at the end of the song, the tempo slowing down, you want a really long drop or maybe it's just for a quick pop into a chorus or something like that, and you see a really quick drop, you can really customize this to fit your needs. So I'm gonna select a region in about three seconds for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna go up to my audio suite here, and uh, I'm going to grab signal generator, stock signal generator inside of Pro Tools. Uh, if you don't have a signal generator on your side, your DAW, you should, but if you don't, then, uh, Try and find one online. I know there's plenty of free options out there. Signal generator, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe Blue Cat has one. So just go check those out uh, and download one. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna leave uh, the waveform to sine wave. And I'm gonna leave the level at negative 20 decibels. Uh, these aren't, you know, sine wave definitely, but negative 20 dB doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have plenty of headroom to process later. Uh, and then I'm gonna set the frequency to 60 hertz. So uh, this isn't a this isn't a number that you need to put in in order to have a sub drop necessarily. Um, a lot of bands or some of the bands that I've worked with have requested that I use a particular uh, a particular note so that it matches with the key of the song rather than that they're playing. And so what I've done for that is I just pull up Pro Q2 and you know I say you know it's in C sharp. I'll say C sharp two, and that's at 69 hertz. Okay, cool. And then I'd throw 69 hertz into there, and it would be in the key of song. In my experience, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Uh, if it's necessary, go and go for it. But most of the time, 60 hertz would be fine for you. My rule of thumb, though, is I wouldn't really go below 45 hertz. You can maybe push it to 40 hertz, but that's really pushing the limit. And I really want to go above 65 hertz because above 65, it's not going to sound like a bass drop. And below 45, most systems won't be able to pick it up. And the goal here is to make sure that every system can hear our sub drop in all of its glory. So 60 hertz is generally a good place to start with. So let's go ahead and just render that out. Perfect. So it sounds like this. Kind of boring. Uh, <laughs> it's a sub drop, you know, and uh, or it's not a sub drop yet. It's just a sine wave at 60 hertz. But we're going to do a little bit more process processing with it. So let's go back up to our audio suite and let's grab Verify, another stock Pro Tools plugin. I know Waves has a version of this. Uh, if not, I'm sure there's free options online. Just go scour the internet or scour forums. I'm sure you'll be able to find one and uh, use it. If you're using Pro Tools, great. You already have Verify. So I'm going to leave it to slow down. We're trying to slow down the sub drop. And I'm going to extend the selection just because uh, if I fit it to the selection I have, I notice that the low end drops out a little bit too soon. Uh, I mean, there's a certain point where the human ear won't be able to detect how low this is going. So extending really kind of helps the sub drop sound, you know, get that fullness out of it a little bit more, which is the goal I'm trying to go with this and leave fades on. So let's render that out. Perfect. So here's where we are right now. Awesome. Um, so next thing we're going to do is I'm going to trim this, the end of this off, that nasty little tail off, and I'm going to go ahead and fade this. Just to make sure that when it gets to that, 
you know, kind of indiscernible stage that the subdrops already faded off. So let me show you how I process this or the general rule I'd use to process it. I'm going to go down to waves here and I'm going to open up our base. If you don't have our base or you don't have the Renaissance collection from waves, uh, just wait till waves has a sale. They always have this collection, the Renaissance collection on sale and uh, for 150 bucks or so. And well, I mean, just get the plugins. I mean, they're, they're great plugins, uh, especially for the price. And if you're looking for, you know, to buy a pack of plugins and come, you know, comes with great stuff, comes with all the Renaissance plugins, Waves Tune Light and uh, an Impulse Loader, which is, you know, a tool that if you're using Amp Sims or anything like that is infinitely useful to you. So with that being said, our base, most of you probably already have it. If you don't, go pick it up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the frequency at 60 hertz because our sub drop is at 60 hertz. I'm going to crank this intensity way, way down here. And I'm going to bring down the output gain just a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that I'm not really adding low end necessarily, but I'm trying to take those harmonics so systems that maybe don't have as much low end in them can hear it. So I'm not trying to, you know, bump up the bass to crazy amounts of low end, but just kind of push it a little bit further. Uh, excuse me. Um, just kind of push it a little bit further to make sure that those systems can actually hear it. So I'll, I'll bypass it and then I'll bring it in. Cool. So hopefully you can hear that it definitely rounds out the low end quite a bit when uh, you bring that plug-in in. Um, so the other thing I may do, and this isn't all the time, is bring up a limiter. So I'm just going to use Maxim, the stock limiter, inside of Pro Tools. And I'm going to set this. I'm going to link them, and I'm going to set this uh, right down around here. And what this is going to do is it's just going to grab the absolute, just the top of the bass drop and just make sure that the it doesn't peak and then kind of drop off that it all sounds a little bit more uniform so let's listen to that maybe set it down a little bit further awesome so let's go ahead and go back and forth with that and hear it bypassed and then in I don't know if it's really doing a whole lot in this case, but sometimes it can help in your mix. So that's really it, guys. Uh, just making the sub drop and then using our bass and Maxim to kind of just even out the low end. And pretty much from there, you're not going to have too many problems in your mix as long as you get the re level right uh, and the balance right with everything else. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps you. And uh, yeah, thanks so much.